Hey everyone, it's Robin, or Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you what I've been working on this past week. I made the sewing machine mat with the little pockets. This was this past Friday's tutorial. When this part was folded up in my fabric area on the shelves and stuff, I didn't realize that it made that fun crisscrossy woven pattern with the dragonflies until I started making the video. Because it just looks like this when it's sitting on the fabric shelf and you can see some of the fabric on top, but it's on a shelf and you really don't see it all. So I thought that was really fun when I was doing the video and I kept looking at this and I couldn't stop looking at this when I was supposed to be talking to see how fun that was. When I make tutorials like this, I've learned over the last few years not to put all of my ideas into one video. I always have lots of things I wanna to suggest to you guys, but that makes a very rambly, long video and it gets to be too much for beginners they can't absorb all of that information and if i tell you about something and i don't show you how to do it it gets really confusing to them so one of the ideas for this i wanted to just mention here is you could add some string over here some ribbon and then when you put your supplies in it you can roll this up like you would like a makeup roll or a, a knitting needle roll and stuff like that have all of your supplies when you're going to class or to retreats, tie the ribbon. Of course, the way you would do it for real is, is you fold down the top. So make sure you put your ribbon towards the bottom here or way up at the top, whichever works for you. Fold it down so that it holds everything in. Then roll it up the best you can based on what you have in there. Tie your ribbon or your shoelace or whatever around it and then you can just put this in your bag and take it to class and you'll be all set and then you can clean up all of the threads that always collect because i let it touch the cutting mat so it always picks up a thread this is where my sewing machine and mat are you can see it here i just slide it back out of the way and mine is always covered in fuzz that's what i love well there's a few things i love about the sewing machine mat i love seeing all those fun colors when i sit down to sew I'm surrounded by what I love, scrappy, colorful fabrics, but it collects the dust, it collects the fuzz. When I clean out the fuzz out of my sewing machine, if I get it all in a little pile, sometimes pieces just float away, it gets stuck to the mat. I can just take it outside and like a rug, I just shake it really hard and most everything just goes away. So I love that. Instead of just having things float around, there's always something floating around the sewing room. There's just so many things that create fiber dust because we have our fiber, we have our sewing machine thread, we have our batting, we have us that are in and out. Now, my shirts always collect a lot of the quilter's jewelry, as they call it, and that's just little bits of threads that stick on it. I try to remember before I leave the house to double check for threads but there's usually something on me that I noticed when I'm standing in line at the grocery store. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. When you're watching my videos, if you could possibly just remember to hit the little thumbs up if you like it. And if you don't like it and you feel it needs to be, just go ahead and hit the thumbs down. It works either way. I would prefer thumbs up, of course, because that is just a more of a mood booster, but it works. I know not every video is going to be for everybody, and if I do something that's annoying, well, then I deserve a thumbs down. Remember, also, we are going to be doing the 50K subscriber giveaway, which will be the Flamingo Mini Quilt. I have not started on that yet. That is on my list for next week. Right now, I'm trying to concentrate on getting some extra videos done ahead of time which comes to what I have right here. I did work on, oh, you can see the pineapple. I did work on these two mini quilts that I'm not gonna spin around and show you because this is something I'm working on with my patrons. I will bring this out when the video is shown for my patrons. I'm just trying to say, as I said, I'm just trying to get ahead just to make sure I have time to do other things instead of video every day, just trying to constantly staying caught up because it's figure out what I'm gonna do, record the video, edit the video and put it up online. And that's usually a two day process times three videos a week. So there you go, there's my whole week. I have one day off. And on that day off, I have to work on either business stuff or getting things into the Etsy shop. I will put this up into that little green project bin right there that I use to collect things that I wanna show you guys. 
I think that was the only creative craftiness that I worked on this week. This week has gone by pretty quick. I still have this bucket that is sitting over there on the table staring at me every day. Whenever I could sit here and sew and not, you know, if I put my eyes down and pay attention to only this table, I'm okay. But if I look over there, glance just a little bit, this bin is sitting there going, ha ha, Robin, ha ha, here we are. And these are just the projects that I still need to finish. I was actually thinking about this one and I was wondering why it didn't sell in my Etsy shop yet. Probably because I haven't finished making it to put it into my Etsy shop. That's uh, part of the process, isn't it? This is my binding. And now speaking of the Etsy shop, when I work on my Patreon projects like these pineapple blocks here, I will be putting them in my Etsy shop. I won't be holding off. So it's not like it's gonna be a total surprise. My patrons know what we're making because they're part of that process but they don't, they don't see the finished project of what I've made until the day the video comes up. Now, speaking about Patreon, on Friday the 10th, I'm going to put up the What is Patreon video. And instead of having a tutorial here on this channel on YouTube, I'm going to link you to a previous Patreon tutorial that I made with my patrons. That'll give you an idea of what Patreon is, and then you can go see the video and get a feel for what the Patreon community is like, at least in my community. If you ever want to see what's going on, I put things into Instagram. Whenever I put something into my Etsy shop, I post the picture on Instagram so that everyone knows that whatever I worked on is done. It's in the Etsy shop and ready to go. So if you're on Instagram, it might be worthwhile to follow me either to get a early look at what I'm working on or to grab something in the Etsy shop before it shows up on the Whip It Wednesday. The very popular items tend to sell either before they make it to the Whip It Wednesday or within the first hour. So if you think there might be something that I'm working on, like maybe you are interested in this product here, this little mini quilt, then you might wanna be part of my Instagram and just see when it pops up. Sometimes I put it here on my YouTube community page and sometimes I don't. It all just depends on, I don't know, the day of the week and the mood I'm in, I guess. The other things that I've been working on is just cleaning things up in this house. I mentioned in the last live stream that I decided to sell my house. There's just too much damage from the hurricane and the house was built in 1986. It's a wood frame house, so it doesn't, it doesn't last as long as a cement frame house that we have here in this area because of the hurricanes. It tends to take a little bit more damage. Now this house is done remarkably well but things are very expensive right now. To put a new roof on is anywhere from fourteen dollars to $20,000, if not more. I haven't been able to get anyone out here to price it for me. There's a very long waiting list just to get estimates, and you need more than one estimate. So there's the cost of the roof. And then the other things, it needs to have all the new soffit put in in the J channel because the hurricane took that out. It needs more insulation put into the attic. It could do with some new windows. So there's just a lot of things that over time, even though we've maintained things over the years, sometimes things just accumulate. And when you get hit with a big storm, like a hurricane, something that devastating, Anything that might have been a little minor thing just got bigger because of the stress of the hurricane. As I mentioned in the live stream, I talked to the FEMA person and we were just talking back and forth and she's like, a lot of people have decided to sell their house. You have to decide what the value of your house is, how much it's worth, and it's really easy to see that. We get estimates when we do our taxes, of course, even though that's not 100% accurate. To sell the house, it could be less or more. And of course, if you're selling a hurricane damaged house, it's going to be less than that value. I'm very much aware of that. But you also have the value of the property. So some people who love their homes and have been in their homes forever, or they've only been in their homes for a few months, some people moved here less than 30 days before the hurricane and then got you know so much damage to their home. So those people, of course, are going to be fixing. I shouldn't say of course. Those people have chosen to fix it. And some people, maybe they're getting older and they decide that it's time to you know, move into a retirement home or something like that, or they're just making whatever decisions they have to personally. So part of the process here is to get a bunch of videos done ahead of time and stay ahead as much as I can, while also taking that one day a week off that I have and just 
purging and packing. That's enough to stress someone out. And it's not, I don't mind, it's not the purging, and, it's not the purging and the packing that stresses me out. It's just the thought of all oh, that work. I purge every year and I'm fine, right? I'm like, okay, I'm going to purge it. And then you think, oh, well, a video, YouTube is listening to me. Hi, YouTube. I know you can hear me because I haven't typed anything or nothing. I've just said it out loud. And all of a sudden I'm starting to get videos on how to pack your sewing room. Now, how do they know I needed to pack my sewing room? So I've been going through and just trying to mentally think of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to pack everything up. And it all really depends on how far you're moving. If you're moving from here down the road, you can really just take those bins and stick them in the back seat of your car or the trunk and take them from this house three miles down the road and put them into the new house and you're all set, right? Well, what if you decide you want to move a little further? What if you're moving across town or to the next town? Or you might want to move a little further. You know, maybe you need to really pack up your house and put it into a U-Haul for a little bit of a drive. So I was thinking, for these, did you know you can take a Ziploc baggie and put it in one of those food savers that suck all the air out of a package so you can put like your cheese or your fish or whatever into the freezer and it won't get, fr uh, free it won't get frozen burn. It won't get freezer burn that way. You can do it with Ziploc baggies for a very short term. It's not good long term. So maybe you want to just like do the cheese and you want to suck the air out of it and keep it in your fridge and then you're going to keep opening it and doing it every few days. So the baggies for the the food saver, I got lost. I was just thinking Ziploc. The baggies for the food savers, they can get expensive. So you don't want to just keep cutting them down so you can use Ziploc baggies. So I was thinking I can take my scraps, put them in each container in a Ziploc baggie, suck all the air out of it, and put it into a box to pack. And that way I can just stack all the plastic containers together, put them in, you know, big plastic. I had these big plastic storage containers. They can all go in there or in boxes or whatever, or I can choose to get rid of them, which I won't. I am actually choosing to get more. I need to expand this system a little bit, but that way none of my fabrics will get mixed together because it took me a bit to get all these sorted and I have them almost exactly the way I want them. I don't want the blues and the reds to get mixed together and have to separate that at a future date. I think that's the best use of a food saver to make sure my scrap fabrics stay nice and fresh. I've ordered boxes. One of us used to always work at a restaurant. Like I used to work at Wendy's or I worked at the hospital and I would be able to get French fry boxes or I would get the boxes from like the paper towels and stuff. They were always sturdy boxes. They were all the same size at the hospital. And I would just periodically, you know, every couple days bring a stacks of them home. People around the hospital would save them for me if I asked. And then I would just use those. and. And when you pack them in your little U-Haul, even if you're going from here to there, you get one of those 1999 U-Hauls, you pack them all in there and they, they fit nicely because they're all the same box sizes. So this time, none of us is working in a restaurant that has boxes like that. So I decided to just go ahead and order some boxes. So I'm gonna start out by packing the fabric that I don't use all the time. So it's like, do I want to put the fabric like this? Should I roll the fabric? Do you fold the fabric? I know the way that I have it on the shelf right now. I wrap it around my six inch ruler, my six by 24 inch ruler. So it sits on a shelf like this, but not all of them are the same yardage because this one might be a yard, this one might be three yards, this one might be a yard and three quarters or something crazy. So I was thinking if I did like this, like I do with the fat quarters that I can fold all my fabric yardage up and put it in a box like this. If I have a box that's either about this width, then it can all go like this, you know, this way, boom, boom, boom. Or if it's a wider, different box, I could put two and stack them like this. Cause you don't want to make the box too heavy. It's almost like doing packing books. You can't put too many in a box because fabric gets heavy after a while. So I still have to go through that. This weekend, I am going, I'm going through my closet. The closet in my bedroom 
Again, I, I purge that every few years. Not that often because I have to take everything out. You have to do it in one day. In the fabric room, I can pull some stuff out, get it going, and I can just leave it there. I can work on it for an hour every night or something and leave it there and walk away, close the door. But my closet, I have to pull everything out. I know there's a lot of things that need to be just taken up to goodwill or something. And I have a lot of yarn I have to decide what I'm going to do with. I have the yarn that I want to keep. And then I just have a bunch of Red Heart yarn that I, I haven't used it in years. So there's no point. So I need to sell it or donate it or do something with it. So I have to pull everything out of my closet, cover my bed, cover my bed. My bed's not this high. Cover my bed, cover the bedroom floor, and then pack and sort and then put things back in the closet in their packed boxes. Because once it's packed, you don't have to touch it again. And what's one of those things is great because if I'm packing up like things from my kid's childhood, I have some brand new clothes that we bought for a grandbaby that their parents decided they didn't want. So I still have them, but they're beautiful clothes. So I was saving them for the next grandchild to come along because Rob had children from his first marriage and then we have our kids. Now my kids here haven't had any children, but his kids from the previous marriage has had several children. They didn't want the stuff. So I'm not just going to, you know, say, oh, well, whatever. I mean, I just, I kept it, right? So I, I could put those away in a box. I'm rambling here, sorry. But I could put those in a box, tape it all up, and I know that that box is done. I don't have to touch it again. So even if I move today, tomorrow, or next year, that box is done. So I'm thinking if I go through and I pack not overpack because when you pack to move, I know I like to leave out just like one or two plates and some silverware and a couple knives and a couple cups and then you pack the rest of the kitchen up. I don't want to go that extreme, not quite yet because I don't have a moving date. But when I sell this house, it might only be 30 days and then it's like, boom, you're out, it's done. And I don't want to say, oh no. So if I find someone wants to buy the house and we agree on the price, I don't want to drag it out too long. I want to be ready since I know that this is what I'm going to do. As I said, if I do it now, I do it in six months or I do it in a year, it'd be more beneficial to get all of this extra work done now over the next course of days and weeks or whatever versus last minute. And they say, okay, we're, oh, look, congratulations. We can close early on your house. You can get out in, you know, 21 days instead of the 30 days or 60 days. I'll be like, oh. Bye YouTube, I, I gotta hunker down, I'm packing. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's your rambling for today. Since I only had the one project to show, I thought I'd give you guys that little bit of a life update. You can guess by the fact that I have the long sleeves on today. I'm actually have two t-shirts to stay warm. It is cold out there. It looks kind of bright. But really, that's a bright gloomy. Our weatherman told us today that by meteorological standards, you can't say it's cold out unless it's in the 30s. Otherwise, it's chilly. Today's high is supposed to be 68. There's a, a nasty wind out of the north that's just making it really chilly. I've been watching things like, if this was over in like Texas, it'd be like tumbleweeds, but here it's plastic bags and cardboard boxes and they are blowing. Like if I decided to go outside and grab it before it blew away to pick up the trash, I'd like to do that if I can. But by the time I get from here and I just go around the corner to the front door, it's already gone and down the road. So it's like crazy. Cause once I catch it out of the corner of my eye and I see what is that? And then I see it and it's five houses down. And there's no way I'm going to go chase in a cardboard box that far. It's just going to keep blowing. It's like when your hat falls off and, and you chase it down the road trying to pick it up. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't need to be on someone else's YouTube video. Crazy Cape Coral woman chases cardboard box down Main Highway. News at 11. But anyways, it's 68. That's going to be the high today. I don't know what it is right now. I think it's probably a little bit cooler than that. But whatever you guys are getting up in Canada... It is so strong and so cold, it's made it down here to southwest Florida. Most storms stop right above Tampa, Lake Okeechobee, which is like the halfway point of Florida. If it comes down to me, that was one very strong storm. Now, I say it's cold anytime it gets below 70. I think 68's cold. It's not freezing. I think 32 and below is freezing, of course. 
but when we have the nice weather and it's about 74, I don't know why 74 is nice, 75 gets a little bit warmer, but it's really nice when you can go out in a t-shirt and jeans and be comfortable. When it gets 75 and above, it's nice to wear the jeans and the t-shirt in the morning, but then in the afternoon it gets warmer and that sun beats down. And it's all about the sun, whether or not it's hitting you. I know many of you guys would love to have my weather and have that sun beating down on you. It would help melt some of that snow you have. And then other areas that normally get a lot of snow haven't been getting much. I saw a couple places in Wisconsin here in January and there was no snow on the ground. I thought Wisconsin was buried in snow for six months out of the year. I thought that was really weird. So I hope everyone who's been having any type of wacky, crazy weather is doing better and that things are starting to clear up for you. I know next week for us, it's going to be in the mid eighties. We had two days ago, it was hot and humid. It was 89 degrees with high humidity. And then the next day it drops down into the sixties. So we're all doing that weird, crazy weather. I know it's like that all across the world. Nothing special down here. It's just, I can handle the cold if it was cold all the time, but it's like cold, warm, cold, warm. It's going to be cold for a couple days. No, wait, it's going to be warm. It's like cover the plants, don't cover the plants. Because if it's more than a certain temperature, if you cover the plants, it's going to be a problem. But if it gets down below and you don't cover the plants, it's going to be a bigger problem. Well, that was a little bit more than you expected today. So happy weather day to everybody. So Friday's live stream, we are going to work on that cardboard project. I put it in the description box of last Wednesday's video on where you can purchase it. So I pulled this one to work on. And my friend sent me the little corner pieces to go with it. And she sent the little glue kit and everything like that. Now, since this is going to be glued, there's probably going to be times where we have to wait for glue to dry. And I got to... I have a feeling we're going to get to a point where maybe we're not going to be able to finish it. So I'm going to also have a backup plan so that we can work on something else while we're waiting for glue to dry. It's like watching paint dry. I haven't pulled it out to read the directions yet, but I will definitely do that. Let's be realistic. I will probably do it Friday morning or Friday at 2 o'clock. I know I'll check it ahead of time in case there's some things I can do ahead of time to prepare for it so that we don't have a lot of time waiting. I can show you what I glued. If it's something like leave this for 24 hours, then I want to do that ahead of time. I definitely have to like choose the fabrics for it. Oh, we'll see. There is even a note on there that tells you what fabrics this person made her own shopping list. I need fabric for this project. I need fabric needed. One yard of red cotton and a half a yard of something they stopped writing. So I thought that was really kind of fun when I just noticed that. So if anyone wants to come over and hang out with me, I think I need to do a garage sale. Part crafting, part household stuff. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys in the live stream. Bye. 3 p.m. Oh, scrappy word, scrappy word, scrappy, scrappy word. Garage sale. How's that? Last minute one. We'll just throw it in there. So remember, if you're not a subscriber, double check down below to see if you've clicked that subscribe button. I hear it changes colors if you click it. And that'll put you into the giveaway for the Flamingo mini quilt. I'll have some type of little thing that you guys can still say, yes, you want to be part of it. But I will double check to make sure you're an actual subscriber because I have a list. And I can see if you're a subscriber or not. Even though there will be 50,000 of you, there's a little search feature so I can just double check. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.